the tropical savanna, this is like the land of the Lion King. Um, the savanna is uh, uh, found within uh, the areas between 10 to 20 degrees of the equator, which is uh, also where we find some of these tropical forests. So, so the differences between whether you're going to find tropical forests or, or tropical savannas is going to depend on some of these other factors, such as, as soils. So they occur north and south of the tropical dry forest within uh, 10 to 20 uh, degrees of the equator. So remember the tropical dry forest was uh, between uh, uh, 15 to 25 degrees of the equator. The climate, just like the tropical dry forest, alternates between a wet and a dry season. Um, when they have the dry seasons, uh, it often is associated with uh, at the beginning of the dry at the beginning of the rainy season. There's there's often thunderstorms, and you get the lightning, which causes the wildfires. So if you've watched The Lion King, which I think I think most of us have watched The Lion King, you're aware that the uh, the the savannas and the grasslands uh, will burn because uh, we see that happening when they battle scar. The soils have low water permeability, which means they hold the water on the surface. They have high amount of clay and uh, that causes the water to stay at the surface, which actually kills the roots of the trees. So uh, they are not going to be having very many trees. The landscape is definitely more two dimensional. They have uh, increasing pressure to produce livestock as well. So there's a strong human influence. So when we look at where we find the, the tropical savanna, we are once again just moving a little bit further each time from the equator. Uh, so we've got this band uh, just to the north and to the south of where the tropical dry forests are, north and south of the tropical dry forest. We have this band in Africa that is to the east of where we have the tropical rainforest. And this is uh, in part based on these clay soils, these heavy clay soils. And then uh, we also have, <clears throat> we can find tropical uh, savannas in places other than than Africa. So we obviously have them in South America. We find them in South Central Brazil, uh, Venezuela, Colombia. We also can find them in Asia and in India. And we can also find them across uh, Australia. When we look at the climate diagrams of these, we can see the very clear uh, indication of a very, very wet season. Um, so once again, we have this jump in the scale on these uh, climate diagrams. So we end up with a very wet season and then we have a, a drought. So we can see here in Venezuela, we have a, a summer wet season where the rainfall is much higher than needed. Um, then we have a short one uh, here uh, just on the edge of the Sahara Desert. We have a very short wet season. It's only two months long. And then here in Australia, we've got an even shorter wet season that's only um, a couple of months long as well. We can see in these different uh, subtropical savannas, the total amount of rainfall is very different uh, depending on how long their wet season is. Because of this changing of the seasons, you'll find that animals with both the tropical dry forest and the tropical savanna will often migrate uh, out of those areas during the dry season. So the savanna, they have generally a, a cooler dry period, a hotter dry period, and then that warm wet period. The frequent flyer, fires suppress the trees and it maintains a large population of grasses and forbs. Forbs are uh, plants that will uh, 
not get woody. They're not shrubs. They're not trees. So think of a dandelion as a form. They're not grasses. So they're going to be broadleaf, but they're not grasses. Some of these are annuals that will just reseed and grow back every year. And some of these are going to be perennials like your dandelion that just uh, dies back during the dry season and then will uh, come back to life when it starts to rain again. So you get these uh, herbaceous, so these non-woody uh, plants, low-growing annuals, and perennials. Um, the grasses are, are monocots. They're, they're more recently evolved than many of the other uh, dicots. They have large numbers of herbivores that feed on these plants. So you get all this fresh green growth of grasses and forbs every year. This is beautiful pasture land. And uh, so you've got these large herds of, of herbivores. Uh, you get animals burrowing burrowing into it. So these are your most common types of animals that we have. So we have a picture here with giraffe and we have Thompson's gazelles, both from the African savannas. And obviously these animals are most active during the rainy season. Um, the giraffes will not migrate in the, in the dry season because they are feeding off these leaves of these trees. And so because they can find those little scattered trees across the savanna, uh, they don't have to follow the rains, but these little Thompson's gazelles will follow the, the rain patterns. One of the biggest threats to this uh, tropical savanna is that it is being used for domestic livestock. So these are cattle on the African savanna and uh, livestock grazing has had a huge impact around the world on the, uh, on the savannas. So uh, humans have always, uh, well, we evolved in, in the savanna area and so it's always been influenced by things that we, we do. We would use fire in order to help the grass grow and, and attract uh, herbivores then to come that we could hunt and use for food. Um, so this is when we lived in this just the savannas, we were hunter gatherers and we were able to also follow these rain patterns. But uh, now that we do sort of settled agriculture, uh, it means that uh, the density of the livestock puts a huge pressure on the land during the dry season. So when we uh, just reviewing where these biomes are again, so far we have covered the tropical uh, rainforest, which is in red, right along the equator here and here and across there and uh, a few little spots depending on the conditions a little further off from the equator. We have in purple, we have the tropical uh, dry forests that are next to those. Lots of tropical dry forests in India. And then we have talked about the tropical savanna. So the savannas are next to the uh, rainforest or next to the tropical dry forest, depending on the soils. And we have these huge savannas across Africa.